remember being a kid and getting one of these? A new box of crayons. Ooh, they were so beautiful. Almost magical, really. I mean, just holding this box would instantly spark my imagination with endless possibilities. I mean, I could be a superhero or take flight into outer space or even create my own planet. My enthusiasm was busting at the seams as I dreamed about becoming a great artist. That is until I got to school and there was a kid in my class with a gigantic box of crayons, you know the one with the sharpener on the back? In that moment, I suddenly felt ripped off. Like how can I possibly do my best with what little I have? And to make things worse, my teacher told me I needed to do a better job of coloring inside the line. Then as I got older, I started hearing that the most innovative leaders take risks and color outside the line. And creativity is thinking outside the box. Well, this confuses me. I tend to see things in black and white, so I've been thinking a lot about this. Let's read between the lines. So what is the box? What are the lines anyway? Well, really, they're like boundaries. So how do we know if the boundaries are good or bad? Well, unhealthy boundaries are confining and controlling and they restrict us and they limit our potential. But there's also healthy boundaries and they can actually provide a great starting point or give guidance and direction or even safety and protection. So then how do we push ourselves and what lines are okay to cross? See, growing up, I was a really rambunctious kid. In fact, if my t teacher or my parents said not to do something, then I took that as a personal challenge to do that very thing. <laughs> this was not the right approach. For example, when my father said, it's time to get in the car for church, that was not an unhealthy boundary just because I wanted to create tassels in the mud in my Sunday best. So see, the more I think about this, I really don't even think that innovation is just coloring outside the lines, and creativity isn't just thinking outside the box. I think that's given the box the power to define where our creativity starts and stops. In fact, when you understand the limitations of a box and you still come up with a great solution, that's creative genius. So let's evaluate our thinking for just a second. Do you see your life, I, th I think life is kind of like a box of crayons. And do you see your life kind of like I did, you know, if I just had more options like that other kid? Or do you think, I can't wait to get started, I'm gonna do something great. Or maybe you see yourself like a white crayon and you think, there's just not much I can do with that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Or do you think, well, this is gonna provide an interesting challenge. I'm gonna come up with a new and innovative way to use that. Or maybe your life looks kind of like a broken crayon. And you think, my life is in pieces, I'm worn out, I'm used. Or do you think, I'm so grateful I've got something to work with? Or maybe you're that kid and you've got the gigantic box of crayons with a sharpener on the back. And people look at you and they're jealous. Except you're thinking, but I don't wanna mess anything up. Everything's gotta be just perfect. And you don't use them and you don't share them with others. See. I think there's something burning in all of you that's dying to get out. Maybe it's a song or a book, a dance, a story, a ministry, a business. So we've got to identify those things that are holding us back. But I also think there's some things that we can do to actually create the perfect environment for creativity to flourish. In fact, I think there's five key ingredients that are necessary for creativity to thrive. Number one is curiosity. We've got to explore and experiment and investigate. Take things apart, build things, read a book, go outside and play. If we develop an insatiable appetite for learning, we are gonna create the perfect soil for new ideas to bloom. Number two, awe and wonder. We've got to regard each moment as a miracle and a mystery because they are. Awe and wonder will naturally develop if you have enough of the first ingredient. Number three, resourcefulness. 
You've got to see more things as opportunities. Stop seeing things as obstacles and hindrances. Use all the colors in your box. Even challenges and trials can be incredible opportunities. Consider the light bulb. One of the greatest inventions of all time that we benefit from every single day was created in darkness. Number four, determination. You've got to be bold and confident and tenacious and persevere. You are on an important mission, and you've got to see it that way. And strive for excellence, not perfection. Perfectionism is an unhealthy obsession that you think you can be perfect. But you can't. None of us can. Failure is a part of the process, and it's okay. It's actually a perfect opportunity for learning. And number five, vision. Stop focusing on the obstacles and focus on the final outcome, the big picture. And remember, the size of your box does not dictate the size of your impact. So what is it you feel driven to do? Are there some boundaries in your thinking that are holding you back? Well, I think it's time to stir up some creativity because you're meant to make the world a more colorful place. So what's it going to be? Where are you going to draw the line?